Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In today's episode I'm going to talk about breakpoints, different kinds of breakpoints and how to use them programmatically. With that, let's get started. Okay, so in IDA we have the breakpoints accessible whenever we have a debugger selected. So if we go to the debugger menu and switch debugger, maybe by default we have no debugger selected. The moment you select a debugger, then we'll have access to the debugger all the other options here and in particular we have the breakpoints breakpoint list add breakpoint and so on so let's start by simply adding a breakpoint and then editing the breakpoint so now here this is what i'm going to be discussing the different kinds of breakpoints and the states of the breakpoint so we have enabled or disabled this is just simply to enable or disable the breakpoint what kind of breakpoint we have either hardware breakpoint or software breakpoint model relative this is instead of having an absolute address it's going to be in function of the module name this is nice when we have targets that might come in later and we have their name and the relative offset from the image base so we can put a symbolic name as i'll show you based on the image base symbolic name is a symbol name just we put something that ida resolves any name known to ida and then when that name is available, the breakpoint will become available. And source code is source code as it says. It could be pseudocode from the decompiler or actually source level debugging. And break, what action to take? Trace to add a trace log. When the breakpoint hits, for example, we want to issue refresh debugger memory. This will recompute all the map pages and the memory information or simply a breakpoint to enable or disable tracing so let's say we put a breakpoint at point a to enable tracing and point b to disable tracing and then as well we have the condition of breakpoint here we can put some code and could be as complicated as you like you can put a simple statement here which will be simply an expression or multi statements so here we click here and then now we can put multi-line of course we can simply invoke a function that we have brought in into the current python namespace or the idc namespace via compilation or if we run the script once then we can simply invoke that complicated function coming from a script file so here for example we can put the conditions we want we can select the language now it doesn't mean that we only have idc or python either is programmable we can register new external languages this is the technical name of those scripting languages and the sdks are known as external languages and then we can test out condition before we even run we don't want to put the breakpoint without testing the codes and run breakpoint will hit we'll have a syntax error so we can hit compile make sure that our condition is okay so now let's start the debugger and show you how the different breakpoints look like. Okay, so here we go. Let's hit F9 and this is our breakpoint. Now let me show you the different attributes. So now if I edit the breakpoint, right now it's just an absolute breakpoint. You can see it doesn't have any of those attributes. So it's a direct address. Now since this is the main executable, IDA knows how to rebase it if this target has ASLR. Now, if we are adding breakpoints to external modules and so on, absolute breakpoints might not be the way to go since those addresses would mean something else if rebasing happens. So to illustrate in that case, if we have a moving target, we can, for example, make it module relative. And here, now the attribute of that breakpoint, the location is the name of the module plus the offset from the base and this is good enough we don't have necessarily to put a breakpoint just on our own executable we could have put it on any other dll it could be a temporary dll that gets dropped and we know the name we know the rva either will follow it nicely once that dll matches when it loads matches our breakpoint relative description here then it will become active so this is module relative symbolic so symbolic we are putting a name as i said so here for example we have start as a name as well if we have a name anywhere in the database that's resolvable we can use the symbolic breakpoint and we just put the name here and source so suppose here for example if i put a breakpoint here Control alt b to open the breakpoint window and so here we have a source breakpoint so here that's the function start line 4 that's the source level breakpoint so these are the breakpoints now apart from regular code breakpoints we have as well hardware breakpoints 
so let's edit the breakpoint as well so now if we specify hardware we will unlock these options here so hardware and then we can have the usual stuff read write execute we can use those hardware breakpoints and hardware breakpoints are subject to limitations from the underlying hardware on x86 we have up to four different architectures might have no hardware breakpoints might have more or less etc and as well we can control the size of the hardware breakpoint as well based on the architecture ida also supports page breakpoints but it's not very solid so i'm not gonna talk about it but these are good enough the execute read write breakpoints very handy if you want to catch when a certain memory is being read from or written and so on for example if we want to use hardware breakpoint on execute it's pretty handy when we're dealing with packed code we can put the breakpoint from the start even though the code has not been unpacked so what does that mean it means we let the packer write the actual code and then when it executes, we'll hit the breakpoint. If we didn't use hardware breakpoint in that case, then we're putting a breakpoint on the packed code and that can influence the unpacking or perhaps trigger self checksum, for example. Since we're on that topic about the software breakpoints, let me show you something. If I go to the debugger options and we should see somewhere here, show debugger breakpoint instruction. This will show us the underlying 0xcc breakpoint instruction on x86. So if I do this, we should see it here after I step just to refresh the memory and we can see the breakpoint replace the original byte of that point here, whatever it was, that was an instruction. We replaced the original byte with CC. When the CC triggers a breakpoint exception, IDAS debugger will do that dance to place the original byte, single step, and suspend again, for example. And then after it single steps, it will put back the breakpoint. So I don't think this is very useful, but you have that ability to see this in case you're troubleshooting, for example. So we don't have to enable this. Now, if I step again to refresh the memory and we see the original instruction again, doesn't mean the breakpoint is not available, but it's hidden by the debugger. So this is important as well. Still on the same topic of CC byte hardware breakpoints. There's another trick that's enabled by default which is use hardware breakpoints for temporary breakpoints. What does it mean? It means that, for example, let's say if I'm running to cursor, so if I just put the cursor here, right click and F4, IDA will internally use a hardware breakpoint. So this is pretty handy as well because it will not touch the code. It will not write anything internally. It will use a hardware breakpoint. That's very handy for, let's say, code that will do self-integrity and so on. We will leave no traces no breakpoint artifacts at all. So for example, if you're adding breakpoints on APIs, let's say on create file, and this process is running and that process has some anti-debugging tricks and it wants to see if certain APIs are hooked. All it has to do is resolve that address of that function in question and check the first byte. If it's a CC, it knows there's a breakpoint there and it might fail silently for example it will exit or detect the debugger breakpoint and so on so this is as well important to know the side effects of breakpoints breakpoints software breakpoints using cc are intrusive so in that case let's say we want to have our breakpoint slightly undetectable we can instead edit the breakpoint and make it hardware execute like this if that software we're debugging wants to check the existence of that breakpoint by reading the cc byte it won't find anything of course it can read the debug registers and then detect if the address in question is in the debug registers and also detect our breakpoint. So breakpoints always have side effects, but hardware breakpoints are a bit more resilient to detection. Now I want to show you the condition breakpoints. So we're going to put a breakpoint on create file and let it run. For now, we're going to do this manually. Let's disable those breakpoints and let notepad run. I'm going to issue a file open. So now file open might eventually trigger a breakpoint. So here we have a breakpoint. Now, if we edit that breakpoint, that breakpoint is a very basic breakpoint, nothing special. But let's suppose we want to do the semblance of a file monitor. We want to see what create file is accessing each time that breakpoint hits. So for that, we can use, for example, the get string literal contents 
API as a condition and we can simply read the memory pointed by the parameters of the API in question to retrieve the string literal contents so create file if we give it a name so if we just change the dummy name to a known name then Ida will give us the prototype correctly now this is not really the correct prototype let's just fix it this is coming from the till file this is the proper prototype it's a fast call we're on x64 so the calling convention at least the first few arguments is rcx rdx r8 r9 and so the file name is pointed by rcx if we jump here to rcx we should see the file name create file w uses the unicode so i'm gonna press alt a and then select unicode and this is the file name so if i want to programmatically retrieve that at that point exactly i can simply run this snippet so here I will use ida utils .cpu.rcx to get the address and then call get string letter contents the address len just automatically detect the length and the string type is unicode we get it as bytes and I'll decode it as UTF-8 because IDA internally will encode strings in UTF-8 so we simply get it back as UTF-8. If I run this code at this point and only it's valid at this point because we're referring to the RCX register which should be valid. Now we can maybe put it a few instructions later so we can put it as long as RCX haven't modified so we can even put our hardware break or, or software breakpoint here it will still work because RCX hasn't been touched yet so that's another way if you want to put a breakpoint maybe instead of putting it directly at the beginning of the function we can put it somewhere in the middle of the function but let's run this code here so just simply clear the screen here and run and here this is the output and this is the file name being accessed now how about hooking this piece of code with this breakpoint so now we can right click and edit the breakpoint go to the condition here and paste that code select Python and we have a choice now to decide what to do when that breakpoint hits do we want to suspend or we want to continue I'm gonna return zero to continue execution so now we're gonna retrieve rcx and then get the string pointed by and then display it and don't break so return zero versus return one you can test it compile no errors and press ok clear the screen here let's run it and i'm gonna also disable some options by the way just some output so here we're gonna disable the logging gear to minimize the output because it's polluting all right clear the screen now for example i'm gonna type some stuff and hit save that will go through the create file and we should have the code executed so here we have it executed now suppose i take a copy of this one and i'm gonna open it in notepad so file open and open this one and here we can see as well it has been called twice it could be maybe the first time to get the file size and second time to open it and read it but that's what happened behind the scenes we got create file called multiple times so these are the condition breakpoints they're very very powerful because you can hook complex logic behind those breakpoints and you can have so many breakpoints now i'm going to talk about breakpoint organization so in complex projects you can organize your breakpoints so i open the breakpoints window and you can for example right click and create folder here and we can say file monitor for example and we add them to the group and we can have multiple breakpoints there add them to the groups and then we can for example right click and disable the whole group or enable the whole group so that's useful like this you can whenever you want a set of breakpoints to be enabled all at once you can do that and of course as well we can have subfolders and and so on so you can really write a file monitoring logic using a bunch of breakpoints working together or you can write information extraction algorithm using breakpoints you can put a breakpoint at a certain point capture certain arguments put another breakpoint at another point leverage what you captured at point one to to extract it at point two for example so let's say one uh, location allocates a memory and stores that memory base somewhere you get a copy in your script and then later on at certain point that memory is populated you know where it finishes populating you can then use what you gathered from step one to dump it in step two for example in reality we can make a tracker here for example to track create file capture the file handle after it's opened we can capture the read file and track the handle to the name we captured in the create file step and then stop tracking at close handle and so on could be a combination of five breakpoints for example and this is how we organize breakpoints and we can disable all of them at once and finally i want to talk about the 
programmatic access to breakpoints but first i'm going to talk about exporting our breakpoint just show you quickly introduce you to the code behind the breakpoint construction so if we go to the breakpoint window and for example let's say select everything and say export breakpoints as idc we can say exported one for example and let's take a look at exported one just see the code behind so here for example this is the idc code that constructs the breakpoints we have programmatically. So in IDC, we're not gonna spend much time on IDC, but the gist of it is gonna help us for Python. So we create a breakpoint object, and this is an absolute breakpoint. So it captured the absolute address, breakpoint type, flags, how many times it was hit, where to add it in what folder and another breakpoint and another breakpoint if we wanted to migrate our breakpoints from one database to another this is a way to simply export as idc file open the new database and run that idc it will reconstruct the same breakpoint state in the new database now what about python so i'm gonna quickly go over the c sdk and the python one so programmatically breakpoint access happens in the dbg.hpp which is different than the idd.hpp, which help us do debugger construction. So idd.hpp help us for debugger construction and dbg.hpp for debugger control. And what we care about is a set of APIs such as add breakpoint, for example, giving the size, the address size, and the kind of the breakpoint. So we have here uh, read, write, soft, execute, etc and we have other apis for example delete breakpoint enable or disable breakpoint or get breakpoint quantity and then get breakpoint by index get nbpt so we can get the quantity starting numerating from zero to the quantity and retrieve all the breakpoint objects and do whatever we want let's take a look at the breakpoint object so what makes a breakpoint programmatically we have the breakpoint condition which is a string the location object could be different kinds of breakpoint location which is defined in the location type could be absolute relative symbolic or source and depending on the location we have to fill other things for example if it's a source breakpoint we have to give it the file name and the line number now this is gonna be supported let's say by debugging symbols so if in windows we will need the pdb from the pdb either can resolve what's the actual address of this information so if we give it a file name and line number using the pdb internally the pdb plugin and the debugger plugin can figure out what's the actual address because at the end of the day at the hardware level there's no concept of source breakpoint or anything of that it's just an address so this is what makes the breakpoint objects so that's the location and uh, EA type and some helper methods, essentially. So let's just quickly show you a couple of function calls. So for example, let's see the one with the condition, this one here. So how do we do it? In Nida Python, it's simple. So the first step is to create a breakpoint object. So I'm going to say b equal Ida API dot breakpoint object, empty object. And then we're going to simply say Ida API dot get breakpoint at a given address i'm going to select here and give it the object the recipient object that we created so b and now if it succeeds we get through and the breakpoint object will be populated so now if i say b.elang i got the language that we set up this breakpoint with and b dot for example ea we get the same ea and so on and the same story goes for different uh, breakpoint apis all right, so that's it for today. What we covered is the basics of different kinds of breakpoints, their attributes, condition breakpoints, and also we spoke about the concepts of breakpoints being detected, when to use hardware breakpoints, what's the side effect of using a software breakpoint, or what's the strategy not to touch the code or leave lots of side effects when we're doing the debugging. And we spoke about the concept of writing a file monitor using condition breakpoints. All right, thank you. And I'll see you next time.